All right, wanted to address some reoccurring questions on Betaflight 3.4. First question I see the most is where did I get the updated configurator, uh, which is 10.3. So if you go, I'll post this link below. This is essentially the Jenkins repository for some other projects in here. And you can see the Betaflight configurator right here. Just like you can go to the Jenkins website for Betaflight itself and grab builds that are nightly builds essentially from the from the GitHub repository. You can grab those hex files at any given time. Like even now between 3.4 and, and I think the next release is 4.0, there'll be builds over the next bunch of months and you can test and, and do that kind of stuff as well. So here you can see, now these are the, the builds you can see in here. But the configure is a little different because you install it. It's not just a hex file. So you can you know pick, pick your poison there. Uh, I'm a Windows user, so I'd hit Windows and then you can go in here and pick either your 32 or 64. Now, if you're having issues, you got to keep in mind, you know, getting it from these uh, Jenkins websites, uh, even the hexes, if you start to do that, or just these configurator builds, if you have issues, please report those to the repository. And so that is here. I'll drop this link in the description and you'd go to issues and then and search for the issue to see if it exists with somebody else or post it. I'm anticipating this is going to be released in the next couple days. So you'd be going to the, um, Right here to the releases, this would probably say 103, and then uh, the 10.3. It might even be released today. So, uh, you know, you can download it at your discretion. Obviously, when the official one is released, you just reinstall it on top of it. What is nice about the new configurator is that when you click into it here, and I go into the PID tuning, I didn't even have the latest one from the last video. So I did get the latest one this like a day or so ago. And you can see now on the filters tab, it's redone. So you can see your low pass one and low pass two, which this is basically the stage one and stage two that you might have come to know them by. And then again, determ low pass one, low pass two. So instead of going into the icky command line, uh, you can just do that here. Now, some of these other variables to turn on some of these other things, uh, those are still command lines as far as I'm aware. So yeah, you'll probably still be in the command line, but it's one less thing here as well. So that's kind of nice. I did want to draw some attention to some more proposed defaults. You know, uh, this is a release candidate, so things are still being worked through. Uh, ultimately, uh, if you notice any issues with Betaflight or the configurator, you know, please do post them. I'll post, I guess, both links to the GitHubs down below. It's the same for both. Just make sure to put, you know, if it's a Betaflight one, put it under the Betaflight repository. If it's a Betaflight configurator, put it under the Betaflight configurator. And of course, search first to make sure uh, it hasn't been issued or, or uh, addressed already or posted already. In the last video, mentioned some proposed defaults. You know, the defaults uh, just out of the box are much better for Betaflight 3.4, much more mature. But, you know, I was posting my own defaults, I guess, or things people could go and, and copy and paste in the command line to turn on some of the new features because I think they're really good. One of the prominent guys that contributes uh, to Betaflight, he's proposing some default changes himself, you know, just based on his two cents out there. So I wanted to get those out. I posted those under the same link as the other one. So if you go to my Dropbox folder and then go under, uh, which is right here, you go under UAV Tech 3.4 defaults, you'll see these CTSUS ones. But he has a freestyle and racing. And I thought that was kind of interesting uh, just for myself looking at some of the changes between the two. So for more of a racing, you know, that's a locked in, very stiff, tight, you know, fast response machine, you can see how he's changing the I-term relax uh, to set point instead of gyro and, and changing the cutoff a little bit. Same thing with throttle boost. He's moving those, um, the throttle boost down from eight to two. Uh, you can see the pit changes here for racing and versus freestyle. The other thing here is the set point relax and set point weight, you know, 1.2 for set point weight versus a 0.8 for freestyle and a 0.5. Uh, I personally like uh, relax racer around 10% or 0.1, but it's, you know, that's a feel thing. Uh, I, you know, my recommendation is a, is a 0.1 and a, and a 1 for set point weight and a 0.1 for relax. So these are just some different input. You know, I figure you throw it out there and, and people can play around with it. One thing that uh, is nice that you can do is you can set up you know three different profiles so you could put three different settings in here 
the filters tab, one thing is important to recognize is your profile dependent filters are this box. Profile independent filters are this box. So basically all the gyro stuff is independent of the profile, but these things over here will change with your profile change. So keep that in mind. Uh, again, back to all these settings here will change on your profile. So you could program one up, program another, and then just use your OSD to switch in between the two and tweak them out and see what you like best. Another thing is the debug mode for capturing your raw gyro data has changed. So the debug mode equals notch doesn't exist anymore. So if you type in get debug, uh, you can see it's not in the list. The gyro scaled is what it's renamed to. And here's a little tip in the future. These are sequenced by number in black box. So when you see a name change here, it is likely just a, if there is a name change, it's likely the same data that it was previously. When these get reordered in different sequence, it really causes downstream havoc for the guys that are coding up the black box explorers. So I'm sure they try to not change them as much as possible. And that's why you'll see new ones just kind of tacked onto the end and things aren't reordered because reordering is difficult. But anyways, um, so then the new command to get that set would be set debug underscore mode equals gyro underscore scaled and then you type save and hit enter and that will get to the correct data. I did double check it, you know, uh, run, run a quick flight, just line of sight and yeah, so it just opened it up in Black Box Explorer. It still says pre-notch, which is, which is fine. I don't care what it's called as long as I know what it is. But um, that, you know, that may change in the future, but it's given you the raw gyro data and then uh, the filtered noise. Okay, that was it. Kind of a short one, so check it out. I just wanted to get some additional information out there and uh, hopefully address some of those questions, and thanks.